These are the pictures you never wanted taken. Mugshots. They tell a story. sound was Phil Spector's sound. He would have like three or four basses, five, six, seven guitars, always four pianos. We used to do crazy stuff just to make, to make sounds. Phil loved that stuff. He's known for carrying guns into the recording studio. There are many recording artists who've talked about Spector pulling a gun during a recording session. Leonard Cullen, the songwriter, had a record that Spectre produced in the 70s, and, and Cohen says that at one point, Spectre leaned over and put a gun at his throat and said, I love you, Leonard, and, and Cohen's response was, I certainly hope so. She walked in and pretty much stopped the whole party. She was six foot tall, blonde, beautiful, had a spectacular dress on. Within the first 10 minutes of knowing her, she had me crying, I was laughing so hard. I don't think I've ever met a woman who was so funny. Fun was what Spectre needed. When Lana Clarkson appeared before him, Clarkson told him she was moonlighting at the House of Blues, but that she had a career as an actress in films directed by Roger Corman. She had energy and enthusiasm, and it came across on camera. She loved talking to people, and Phil Spector would have been such an exciting place for Lana to be, just to talk to that man for five minutes. Then one star-crossed night on the Sunset Strip, the faded legend and the B-movie queen teamed up to produce a real-life Hollywood mystery story. Ira Einhorn, the mystery behind the man they call the unicorn. The guy had a charisma, he had a force. He's a murderer, woman abuser, and he's a coward. When we found that he had skipped the country, I don't think anybody was really surprised about it. Just about anybody who, who used cocaine in the 1980s was using Pablo Escobar's product. Escobar is probably the most violent, the most ferocious criminal that has ever lived. He was uh, to cocaine what Ford was to cars. The kind of money that Pablo Escobar made makes uh, Al Capone look like he was selling carnations on a corner. Escobar went to great lengths and expense to promote himself to the people. This film has the look of a typical South American feature, complete with overwrought musical score. But incredibly, it is an elaborate home movie Escobar commissioned in 1982. He wanted the people of Colombia to see him as he saw himself. Relaxed, confident, fun-loving, and surrounded by adoring family and friends. It provides an unprecedented view into the private life of a brutal killer whose need to be loved and admired was as strong as his need to be feared. With his five wives, he lived the outlawed lifestyle of a polygamist. Tom goes and marries 13 and 14 year old stepdaughters, deprives them of education, gets them pregnant, and lives off the welfare system. A lot of people see him as arrogant. I see Tom as very self-confident. Tom is a great guy to talk to. I think he's a funny guy, but he is a pedophile. Our children see their father as a religious prisoner. The underground world of polygamist Tom Green. We have arrested Mark David Chapman for the homicide of John Lennon. Mr. Chapman came up behind him and called to him Mr. Lennon as he arrived at that doorway. And then in a combat stance, he fired, he emptied the Charter Arms 38 caliber gun that he had with him and uh, shot John Lennon. Mark David Chapman. I remember thinking, why do these guys always have three names? 
And I remember what a cliche he was. This little guy, this nobody, swept up by catcher in the rye, of all things. This little insignificant person could have such an unbelievable impact. On the 20th century, just defies the imagination. John really considered New York to be sort of a center of the world in the same sense that Rome was at a time, you know, when all the uh, influence of the rest of the world was coming from one place, and, and John felt that it was a good place to be. I was living on the West Coast, and Howard Cosell told me that John Lennon had been shot in New York City and was dead. Monday Night Football. I'll never forget it. The biographies of our time. The TV series, Mugshots.